Sure. Um, obviously, Coach, with uh, those that aren't going to be able to go that you know, how's practice been going this week and what adjustments have you had to make? Well, practice has been really good. Um, <clears throat> it was great to be back with the team yesterday. Um, but Monday and Tuesday went well. The coaches staff ran it uh, real well. The kids practiced hard. Um, we've had to make <clears throat> a few adjustments, but um, – you know, injury-wise, you'd have to do that anyway. And and uh, so uh, it's gone uh, – practice has gone well. Tom? Sam, we get to ask you about Felipe and his, his left hand and wrist during the course of the week. How's he looked? Is he, is he ready to roll? Yeah, he is. Uh, really no complications with that hand, and, and uh, he's ready to go practice every day this week. Nikki. Coach, um, Traylon Smith, what has, you know, his production meant for this team and also just his general attitude? Uh, he's awesome. You know, he's uh, tough, hard worker, just a great kid to be around. A lot of fun to be around. I like messing with him. You know, because I can get him pumped up pretty fast, you know, and uh, but he's tough and he runs hard and makes the line better, uh, makes the team better. Um, just been very, very proud of the way he's played and it's all centers around how important the game is to him and how much effort he gives. And uh, to me, he's got Arkansas football player written all over him. That's what we, that's what we're made of. That's he's the type of kid to, makes us have success. Scotty. Hey coach, earlier in the week, I think you mentioned Trey Knox and, and Tyson Morris are probably gonna have to step in you know, in place of Davion. How was their week of practice been? You feel like they're ready to go? Both of them have had good practices. I think you'll see both of them uh, Saturday morning and, and uh, they'll be ready to go, but we've caught the ball well this week and um, We've cut down a little bit of practice this week simply because of numbers and and because of, <clears throat> you know, it's later in the year. We would do that anyway, but not a lot, but enough to, you know, try to save some legs and we're down a little bit number wise. So, but those two guys certainly have, uh, have had good weeks. Got a lot of confidence in them. Hey, Biddy. Yeah, Coach, you mentioned uh, earlier week that you guys are spending a little extra time on third downs, both offense and defense. So I was curious how that's going this week. Well, I think um, yesterday it ended up uh, 500, uh, two, for, two for four on offense and defense uh, uh, with the ones. And I think the twos were a little less than that. It might have been a one for four day, maybe two for four. I think it was a one for four day with the twos against the twos. So we, we had uh, eight reps total and we graded them. I mean, we wanted we wanted that to be a big emphasis on practice and it was, and, and I thought both sides did well on it. Uh, yeah, Sam, Felipe's on track to, to break the school record for completion percentage. I mean, has he lived up to your expectations with what you thought you were getting with him or has he maybe been even better than you could have imagined? No, I'm a big Felipe Franks fan, you know, always have been whenever I, whenever I was over, over at Georgia and he was playing against him. He was scary dude to play against, you know. Um, to be honest with you, I, I have high expectations for everybody. And he's certainly been the player that I thought he would be. But the expectations when he came here was to do what he's doing for our football team. And, and he's doing what I thought he could do. Bob. Hey, Sam, I was doing some on, uh, on Brooks and Fouché. I was wondering if you could maybe say something about each of them, how you think they've played this season. With them both being Louisiana kids, do you think they get a little extra pumped up to play LSU? I imagine they would, you know. Um, it's just the same thing. I, I don't think either one of them were offered by LSU. So that's, you know, that. Honestly, right now, 
that happens frequently, you know, in the SEC when we're playing teams and, and uh, obviously they're from that state. They probably wanted to go to LSU or had, had fond memories of LSU, but they both are playing really well. You know, Greg, Greg's had some big plays for us this year. And certainly anytime you got a guy that's starting as many games as he has, you're, Obviously, he's the best you have at that position, and he's done a nice job. And then Joe, Joe's just Joe. You know, I love Joe Fouché. I love everything he brings to our program, brings a lot of um, grit to our program, brings a lot of personality to our program, a uh, very physical player. And, uh, you know, I just – I love him. I love both the guys. I think they're great assets to our team. Nate. Sam, with the uh, tempo offense, just what has made it so effective lately as compared to early in the year, and how much has that helped your running game? I, I don't think we're hurting ourselves as much as we did early in the year, you know, with alignments. And I'm talking about pre-snap stuff, you know, where we were having to flip it back or get it wide out on, it got wide out off. Maybe uh, our splits weren't correct, things of that nature that are so important to success of plays. I think the quarterback has had less time um, making sure everybody on the offense is aligned right, uh, where now he can look at the defense and have some things that uh, are important to him pre-snap for his success. And I think all those things together have helped us. Certainly when we get into our tempo, we played really well. Uh, the team's bought in to Listen, we really can't get into that until we get the first first down. I think they've bought into that. And and after we get a first first down, a lot of times you'll see us have really good success during that drive as long as we stay penalty free during that drive. Otis? Well, I was a designated Nate Dog question asker. <laughs> He's here. So. But Sam, uh, talk about uh, – Jalen Catalan, redshirt freshman. He's, he's he's not only playing great, but he's kind of stepping up as a leader and just he, is he exceeding what you would expect from a red freight redshirt freshman? Yes. And again, um, we have high expectations for everybody on our football team. But yes, I mean, uh, and I'm talking about just his his physical play too. I mean, he's he's a physical guy and uh, knows what he's doing, uh, is the captain back there for the secondary, and uh, just very smart guy and, and uh, certainly a tenacious hitter. Kyle. Kyle. Coach, what did it feel like for you to uh, open the door to the facility and you know be back around your team yesterday? Oh, it was awesome. I mean, that's why you get into coaching, it's to be around kids and your staff and – I was, it was wonderful. You know, uh, I got a new red door on my, uh, on my, in my office. It was two glass doors and now it's red. So that, that kind of made me pumped up when I got in here today. That's kind of a surprise. I'd ordered it a long time ago, needed a little privacy and I finally got my red door. So that was exciting to get that too. Trey Schaff. Yeah, Coach, I guess, was it more therapeutic for you or the team to see you back? And then second, what would it mean to you if you're able to bring the boot back to Fayetteville for the fans and, and for this team? Well, it was probably more therapeutic for me. You know, the kids had had uh, Barry and the staff running it while I was gone. So it was probably a little bit more for me than the kids. But uh, the boot um, – Louisiana LSU game is a big deal for, for Arkansas. It's a big deal. And uh, we have approached it that way. Obviously, all games are important. Uh, this has a little extra extra juice to it, obviously. And uh, uh, we'd, love to, we'd love to have the boot stay here. Um, we know we have a big challenge. We know they're a great football team. But certainly, we're excited to play on, on Saturday. Tom. I guess you got your last testing numbers back today, but you're, you're having another round of testing. 
you feel pretty good that you guys have got this thing contained and that the, the numbers you've had at practice uh, are, are going to be, be, be available? No, I don't feel good about ah. COVID. I mean, uh, you know, I think everybody's looking for an answer, and I, I'll give you the answer. We're going to play Saturday as of right now. We're going to play. We have a test that we took today that gets back tomorrow. And I'll, I'm going to just tell you the truth. We're, we're running thin, and we want to play the game. Uh, but you have to have adequate numbers to play the game, and we are thin. And so if we have a good test tomorrow, then by golly, we're going to play the game. We want to play the game. We have not talked to our players one second about not playing the game because we want to play the game. They want to play. And so as long as our numbers will allow us to play, that's what we're going to do. Are we thin? Yes. Nikki. Um, Coach TJ Finley, you know, he's a really young player. You mentioned him briefly on Monday, but what have you seen um, after watching more film on him um, and what he could present as a challenge to you guys? As you watch him a little bit more, you know, he got a much stronger arm than what I thought. You know, I mean, uh, from watching him the first couple of games, I was, I was really, I was more concerned about him taking a ball down and running and, uh, Obviously, there's concern there, Nikki, but he has a much liver arm as you continue to watch him than what I th earlier thought. So the guy can hurt you both throwing and running. He played a great game against South Carolina. And uh, so he's just a double threat. He's one of those quarterbacks that you, you know, you're not, it's hard to prepare for because he can hurt you when things break down. And so we, we're certainly trying to be ready for that. But I think to answer your question was the strength of his arm uh, is a little bit more surprising as I continue to watch him. Hey, Betty. Coach, I was curious about recruiting in the state of Louisiana. You guys brought a couple of guys in last year, have eight players from Louisiana on the roster. How important is that? state to your guys recruitment because they do produce so many players and who who's in there is it I know probably coach LeBlanc um coach Derek's Davis. in there Brad Brad Davis is in there um I think that's it right now I think Derek and Brad Jimmy uh Smith may have a, a small portion of the portion of that too um it's not Trey it's not exactly right on the top of my head simply because you know we haven't been out for quite a while well mm -hmm ever, I guess, since, uh, well, we have, but not since uh, March, I guess. But um, anyhow, uh, it's very important to us. You know, any, as we've stated a long time ago, Trey, that uh, if it's border, if it's a border state to us, it's, it's our hotbed. That's, that's where we want to, you know, Arkansas and the ones that are touching us, we think that's where uh, we can we can do the most damage in recruiting. Not to say we can't go to Georgia or go to wherever, Florida, but the ones that are touching it, it's easier to sell. It's easier to sell the parents, you know, where they're in driving distance, things of that nature. So it's a very important state to us. Touch. Sam, you talked about Trey Knox a little bit earlier, but I'm sure this season hasn't gone exactly how he had hoped. I mean, how's his attitude been throughout the year? And, and could you tell maybe this week he has a little, maybe extra pep in his step knowing that he's going to get a, another opportunity? I can tell that he has, that he's excited about this week. Um, you know, anytime that uh, you started and then you're not necessarily starting or not playing as near as much as you would, that's hard. I mean, it'd be hard on a grown man. That's hard. Very, very um, thankful uh, the way he handled it. And uh, I think he's extremely excited about his opportunity this Saturday as long as, as well as I am and our offensive staff. Uh, but he's shown a lot of maturity in this situation that was dealt to him. Ty. Coach, I know you thanked Ed earlier this week, kind of his upbringing into the head coaching stardom at LSU, going from the defense of being a defensive line coach to that. 
Um, whether it's just starting on either the offensive defensive line, having a, a really solid job in recruiting and seemingly to have, have a number of different relationships. Do you, do you see any you know, similarities between you and Ed Ogeron? You know, I don't, I don't know him well. Uh, I know that uh, if you, if you speak of him, um, words like uh, recruiter, uh, players, coach, uh, motivator, um, things of that nature uh, come from other people when you talk about Coach Ogeron. Um, so hopefully some of those things come out about myself and our staff. But, um, you know, he, he worked his way. You look at his resume, it's very similar to mine. I mean, he had to go to a lot of different schools to finally land uh, a head coaching job. And, and certainly being at Ole Miss and then certainly being at LSU and then winning a national championship those are things that I, I really can't speak of because I certainly haven't done anything like that. But uh, um, he surrounded himself with great coaches. And that's, I, I think, you know, I heard him speak about that from his first job to this job and where he's kind of been a little bit more uh, of a um, head coach in the fact that he's allowing his coaches to do a little bit more this time than maybe what he did at Ole Miss and learning from that, those things, I heard him speak. And, and uh, certainly I'm a guy that uh, hire people to do a job and then they, they need to go do it. And, and if I was better offensive coordinator than Kendall, then I'd run, call the plays. And if I was better than Barry, I'd call the defensive plays the same way with Scott. And I'm not, uh, I'm a guy that, you know, they see, see, sees things in practice and, and make sure that they are what I think should fit our program. And, and the rest of the guys, they do most coaching. Last one, Bob. Okay, I'm going to get a bit too far to that. Um, hey, one thing, a follow-up on Brooks, he told us the other night that LSU came in on him. I think he said his high school coach told him on signing day, hey, LSU is interested in talking to you. And he was like, eh. I'm going to Arkansas. I'm committed to them. Um, how how good is it to know that? Because you, you probably didn't know that because you weren't here. And then two, I kind of forgot it was a morning kickoff until you mentioned it. You already saw play a lot of 11 a.m. games the last two years, but this will be the first one. How do you think you guys are ready to go for for 11 a.m.? Well, I'll be honest with you. If somebody comes on in on you the day of signing day, they really didn't want you. And so, I mean, that's just the truth, you know. They waited till signing day to find you. Uh, you probably weren't at the top of their list, okay? I hate to say that, but it's true. And then the second thing, the 11 o'clock, uh, we had, you know, we've already run through that before. You know, we had a 7 a.m. We had a scrimmage, and we had 7 a.m. pregame, and we went out and scrimmaged at 11 o'clock getting ready for this game, for any 11 o'clock. Well, we kind of were hoping we'd get 11 o'clock game before game eight, you know. It seemed to me like we're the night squad. But uh, being 11 in the morning, we're, we're looking forward to that. We've already ran through that. We had a scrimmage at 11 uh, solely for the reason of being ready. We've already been there, done that for this LSU game. All right, that'll wrap us up. Thanks, Coach. Go Hogs.